Welcome to Managerial Accounting. My name is Jose Munoz. My background is uh, I am the former CEO of Chicken of the Sea, the, at the time the world's second largest seafood company. I've spent uh, over 35 years in international business. So with that, what we'll be doing is looking at this course, uh, getting you ready to be able to use accounting and financial data to make management decisions that will make you a more valuable manager to yourself and to your organization. The purpose of this course, we're going to talk about how to use accounting numbers in order to be able to make more effective decisions as a manager. Consequently, we're going to study, we're going to look at two particular approaches. The first thing, and we're going to force you to change the way you might normally have made decisions in the past. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on quantitative analysis. Most managers typically want to rush off, make a decision based on the qualitative factors without taking into consideration the quantitative analysis and it's at that point where most managers make bad decisions. So what we're going to do is we're going to reorient you into always doing a quantitative analysis first. Once you've done the quantitative analysis, then we will apply the qualitative factors to the, uh, to the course. So in this first chapter, which is kind of an introductory chapter, we're going to look at managerial accounting versus financial accounting and we're going to look at some cost concepts that you need to master in order to be an effective manager. So if we uh, if we go to slide six uh, we'll see that managerial accounting provides financial and non-financial information for managers to use in decision making. Financial accounting provides general purpose financial information typically for those outside the organization to use. So if we move on uh, to the next slide, you'll see who uses which. And I'm not going to go over all the slide, but I just want to bring out some important concepts. First of all, financial accounting focuses on the past. It's all historical information. This is what you see in financial statements. Um, audit reports, and you'll come across the term GAAP, G-A-A-P, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. This is what we talk about when you as an investor or somebody outside the company get hold of financial statements. This is what you're looking at. Managerial accounting, on the other hand, is internal and it's forward-looking. We're looking at making decisions that impact the future. So we're we're using a lot of projections, a lot of estimates in order to help us make better decisions. Managerial accounting, therefore, is not constrained by GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. And in fact, what it does is that it prepares us to make those decisions that we as managers need to make to keep our businesses thriving and successful. So if we move on to slide 16, we're going we're gonna to look at the um, managerial concepts, and there's about five or six that we're going to analyze. We're going to look at cost behavior. We're going to look at traceability. We're going to look at controllability. We're going to look at relevance, and we're going to look at function. If we look at cost behavior, the next slide, uh, you'll see that what we mean by cost behavior is how a cost behaves when the volume of activity changes. A fixed cost we're going to define as one that doesn't change with levels of activity. For example, we could have monthly rent. You think of monthly rent and if you think of it in a personal sense like an apartment, your landlord doesn't care if you spend one night in your apartment or 30 nights in your apartment, your rent is still the same. Likewise, manager of the apartment unit doesn't care if 
the month has 28 days like February or 31 days like January, your monthly rent is still the same. So in this case, we had two levels of uh, activity. The rent didn't change even though the levels of activity changed. A variable cost, on the other hand, is one that changes in proportion to changes in the level of activity. For example, if I buy gasoline, the total amount I spend on gasoline is going to depend on how many gallons I buy. Therefore, gasoline is a variable cost. And then finally, we're going to look at a mixed cost because a mixed cost is a cost that has elements of both fixed and variable. Classic example of that is your monthly utility bill. Let's assume you are going to be away on vacation for two months and you shut everything down. You shut the pilot, you shut uh, all the electricity, you have nothing on, you come back, you're still going to have a utility bill because SDG&E or your local utility company is going to charge you a fixed base amount and then your bill jumps up or down from that depending on how much you use. So again, in summary, classification by cost behavior, we're going to have three elements, fixed cost, variable cost, and mixed cost. So if we go to the next slide, then we're going to look at direct costs and indirect costs. Direct costs are those costs that are traceable to a for example, a product. So if I'm a manufacturer and I'm making a table, my direct costs are the costs of the lumber, uh, the metal, the screws. It's also the cost of the labor that it takes to make it. I can trace those costs directly to that table. An indirect cost is a cost that cannot be traced to a single cost object. For example, we might have um, Oh, the depreciation on the machinery that uh, cuts the wood. We can't trace it directly, but we know we couldn't make the table without having the saw blade to cut the wood into the right uh, shape, as well as maintenance. Uh, we have general janitorial services. Well, we can't trace that into the cost of the product, but we know that at the end of the day, we have to sweep up and clean the the factory floor in order, uh, you know, just for good manufacturing practice. So if we move to the next slide, we then have controllability. So depending on the level of management that you have within that organization, you're going to have either a lot of control or very little control uh, because this is this part of it is important because as we hold our managers accountable and we bring in performance measures, we want to be able to know if you had control over that cost or not. Uh, moving on then, we have our next concept is relevance. And what we're going to look at with relevant costs are those costs that are pertinent to a decision that we're going to be making. And not all costs are relevant. For example, if we're looking at buying a new machine, the secretary's salary has no bearing on whether we buy a new machine. So that would be an irrelevant cost. We wouldn't have to consider it in the decision of whether we should uh, uh, bring in this, this new machine. On the other hand, the cost of the machine, the operating expenses, how much it saves us over the old machine, those costs are clearly pertinent or relevant to the decision. We move on then. We have a second form of relevance is the out-of-pocket costs. That requires, again, we're talking about a decision and, and it's going to be into the future. And so we're talking about what kind of out-of-pocket costs are we going to have to incur in order to bring in that, uh, that piece of equipment. Uh, moving on, again, notice that every time we make a decision, we have another relevant item called opportunity costs. And the reason is, uh, the example on the slide refers to uh, college tuition, but look at it this way. Let's think of it in a business sense. We're deciding whether to spend $20,000 on a new machine. Well, once we commit that $20,000 to the new machine, we have 
we have foregone an opportunity to invest that $20,000 elsewhere because that $20,000 is available to us only once in this decision. And if we choose to buy the new machine, we are then precluded from investing that $20,000. And there is an opportunity cost related to what other alternatives we passed up in order to, uh, uh, to invest in that machine. Finally, then, we move into uh, function. Uh, and here we're talking primarily about product and period costs. And if we're a manufacturing entity, we're going to be faced with product costs that are comprised of direct labor, direct material, and factory overhead or manufacturing overhead. Direct labor and direct material go directly into the product. Manufacturing overhead are those costs that support the manufacturing of the product. Period costs, those are easy. That's anything that is not a product cost is a period cost. And here we notice uh, in, the, in the following slide, we notice the different treatment. Period costs go directly into the income statement, as you see at the top of the slide. However, product costs, before they go to the income statement, we manufacture the product, it sits in inventory, and then finally we sell the product. It's only at the time that the product is sold that that product hits the income statement, the cost of that product. The rest of the time it sits on the balance sheet as an asset. So we'll have different, slightly different treatment. Uh, finally, in this chapter, I want to look at uh, slides 25 and 26, where we look at the, the balance sheet of a manufacturer, which is now going to have three different types of inventory accounts. We'll have the raw materials, which is made up of all the raw material, like the raw lumber in my table example. We're going to have the goods in process, where we've taken the raw lumber, we've taken it out, we've started working on it, but we're not finished making the table and then finally finished goods, uh, which are the completed tables that are ready to sell. Whereas a uh, retailer is just going to have one inventory account, uh, like a Nordstrom's. They're just going to have, they don't make anything, they buy everything, it's already finished. Now, if we look at the income statement, what you'll see is that uh, in a merchandiser, their cost of goods is, in using the Nordstrom's example, it's wh whoever sold them the goods, that price is their cost of goods purchased. In a manufacturer, it's the cost of goods manufactured. It's how much it costs that uh, manufacturer to make the product. Okay, those are just some of the highlights of uh, Chapter 1 just to get you into the flow of the, uh, of the chapter and the materials that we'll be covering throughout the rest of the course.